We'd like to open our meetings. Um, we'd like to start them with a prayer and a pledge. If you'd like to join, please stand. Now, Honorable Dr. Lou Cleveland will uh, say a prayer for us. Dear Father, we stand in awe of you as our creator and sustainer, and we ask that you, we humbly ask that you are being in the hearts and in the presence of uh, us as we conduct this meeting. Well, I want to thank you for the blessings that you've given us this year, that you have been so gracious to our district, and we thank you for those blessings. And I'd like to offer a special prayer of comfort to those families of, of our students who've lost their lives here this year, and that we may remember them and as they go through the uh, grieving process and, and process the loss that we have had as, as a district. I uh, ask you to uh, thank you for each one of these board members for their their love of you, their heart for this district, and uh, all of our staff and our, our district staff and our school staff that work very hard every day to make sure our schools are the best they can be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have the agenda in front of us, Mr. Taylor. What is your recommendation? I recommend approval. Move with all. Second. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? So we um, had one one change. Special Olympics. Uh, there was some discussion or about the time, so they will come forward on the July the 12th meeting to be recognized. So that is one change here. Uh, any citizens request? Did I see a hand? Yes. Okay. All right, if you would come up and uh, let me read this to you. The Washington County School Board welcomes you to this meeting. This is a time set aside for the citizens of Washington County to address the school board. This is not a question and answer period. It is not a political forum, nor is it time for personal accusations or derogatory remarks to or about school personnel. If you would like to address the school board, please come to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and limit your comments to not more than five minutes. Your participation is welcome and appreciated. Well, thank you. It is nice to be here. Uh, I'm Greta Dram. I currently reside at 720 3rd Street, and that is in Shipley. And I have a document. The topic I would like to just briefly mention is kind of a follow-up on uh, last meeting there was a presentation and there was a topic of dress code and I know there is an upcoming workshop on dress code and as someone who has been trying to enforce district policy and regarding dress code for more years than we really want to admit um, just observing things on campus and things that would be make my job easier because if it's a policy i feel like it's my duty to enforce and of course the whole premise of a dress code is to have a safe school with a limited number of distractions and i have just targeted some some dressing issues with middle and high school because we know post-puberty bodies are significantly different than prepubescent bodies and so that's i don't elementary school is not what i'm concerned about um but i i would just like to share that some things that have really been difficult um the last couple of years um and you know we know that fashion changes um uh, you know things that were in fashion and a problem um 10 years ago 15 years ago like for example the sagging Bridges. That was really a style statement 10, 15 years ago. Nowadays, not such a big deal, not so much. Just, you know, a little bit here and there. And usually it's more that they just forgot their belt rather than trying to make the statement by having the, the low pants with the, the garments exposed. So that's just one example. Um, but I just made a little bulleted list 
Um, just to help guide you, I do understand that you all are going to do a workshop in the future. And so I just thought that some of these guidelines might help you because if you're not at school um, on a regular basis, you forget and or you don't see things. And that's not a derogatory or disparaging remark. That's just the way it is. You know, I see things a lot, sometimes too many things. Um, so um, just real quickly, clothing should be free of rips, tears, and holes. Uh, minimum hemline um, on shirts, shirts, skirts, short skirts, dresses, two inches above the kneecap. The reason I um, am suggesting that is a little less anatomically disproportionate than the fingertip model um, because if you have a long torso, um, fingertip can be rather short. And I'll be very honest, recently we've had more and more boys wearing shorter shorts and fingertip on a male student that's already had puberty is not long enough <laughs> when they sit in class and sometimes it's embarrassing to maybe the teacher who happens to see things she just want to see. Um, so as a boy mom, uh, I would just like to address that. Um, that is a little, I, I've never had to deal with that until about the last two or three years and that was a new revelation. Um, so that's the reason I was just looking at the hemline link. That, this, the two inches above the kneecap would be a little more suitable for all physiques and statures and genders than the current fingertip. And it's really easy to um, eyeball, you know, you could, it's pretty easy to look out and see if that's two inches above once you kind of get a feel for what two inches looks like, not put your hands down and those kind of things. And anyways, um, shirts, blouses, dresses should have sleeves. Uh, shirts and blouses should have modest necklines and linked so as to avoid showing cleavage and mid-drift. Um, the mid-drift shirts are coming back in style. I don't know if y'all noticed, but I've noticed some of the high-waisted jeans and the mid-drift shirts are coming back. So while we haven't seen that much in the last 15 years, I think fashion trends are coming back with that. Um, garments should be worn in such a way to avoid showing underwear, lingerie, such as boxers, briefs, bras. Leggings may be worn under dresses and skirts of acceptable length. And again, we're going back to that two inches above the kneecap. So that removes all of the, um, is that a shirt or is that a t-shirt or are those leggings? You know, well, if you go with the two inches above the knee, that, that kind of removes the whole t-shirt and leggings thing that has been an issue. So just looking to clarify and simplify. Um, um, to protect from weather and natural elements, hoods, knit caps, and hats are permitted to be worn outdoors only. This, I know, seems maybe nitpicky or old-fashioned because we know back in the old days, men did not wear caps and hats in the building. And that's not really in our culture so much these days, except for some of us that are a little old-fashioned. However, it is a safety issue in our buildings. We don't need hoodies and hats and caps. We need to be able to see who's coming in. I mean, right now, you know, our campuses, my campus is open and I need to be able to identify. And the only way I have to identify a student is just by facial recognition. So if they're wearing a hood or a hat or a cap, that could be a safety issue. That's a safety concern for me. Um, I need to know who's in my hallway. On campus, it's a problem too, except I do recognize that when it's cold and you're sitting outside, standing outside, yes, you need to, to protect yourself. Or if it's hot, you know, we are concerned about skin cancers and those such things. So we don't want to expose anybody unnecessarily. But, but I just felt like the um, hat issue might need a little more clarification. And part of that is, is a safety uh, issue. Um, and of course, the last two bullets are about um, clothing associated with gang activities or illegal activities or just profanity or vulgarity. Um, and we've always addressed, you know, things like that in our um, dress code. Just, these are just some ideas that might help you as you go forward, um, just because I'm there and I see things. And we don't want to 
you know, we don't want to deal with that. I don't like having to dress code a student, you know. But I will also say, you know, when it comes to, well, they let her do this and they didn't do this for her, it's hard to see everything. You know, I get busy teaching and I don't usually notice what's on the bottom part unless there's something glaring out at me that I wish I hadn't seen. So it's not that many of us, it's not that we're not trying to be, um, do our due diligence with dress code. It's just that we're busy teaching and making sure to ask for wipe down and making sure we have the right people in the classroom. And we just don't always see things. Um, but if you could help us by making it clear and concise, um, that would be outstanding. And we'd love to you as you go forth, go forward in that endeavor. We would by all means invite you to come back on July, on the uh, workshop day, July the 19th. Oh. It, it's in my calendar. All right. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Next, uh, we'll be taking the consent items. We'll be taking these as a whole. Mr. Taylor, what is your recommendation? I recommend approval. Second. Second. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. PAEC record recommendation, Mr. Taylor. Uh, I recommend approval of the packet. Move it off. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? So moved. Human Resources for the Panhandle Technical College. Okay. All right, Mr. Brock is uh, choosing himself on number two, so we'll take these um, out of number one. And number three, we'll take item number one and three first, and just wrap it up saying number third. Or we'll just take them all in. Would you like that saying just now? Okay. okay. We'll take uh, one and three first. Mr. Taylor, we'll correct the approval. Can we move it out? I'll second. And moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? So moved. Number two, approval of additional summer hours for. Patrick Brock, Mr. Taylor. I recommend approval. Quickly Doc. I'll second. Any discussion? Mr. Brock abstaining. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Human Resources, Kate Smith Elementary School, Mr. Taylor. I recommend approval. Quickly Doc. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. <coughs> Any opposed? So moved. Human Resources, Vernon Elementary School. Mr. Taylor. I recommend approval. I move with the uh, Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Human Resources, Vernon High School. Mr. Taylor. I recommend approval. Move with the uh, Second. And move and second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Human Resources Vernon Middle School, Mr. Taylor. I recommend approval. Will we adopt? I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved, Mr. Taylor. Can we bring Ms. Seeley to the front? Mr. Revere, would you care to join us here? We had a, or the Vernon Middle School had a departure uh, I call it a fifth. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I said that I have obviously did know some limits. So I was going to talk about how sad it was because she was coming to me. So <laughs> I'm kind of good. I'll see you in three. Extremely excited to have Ms. Seeley join us. Yes. Uh, as her middle school AP. And I think that she'll do a wonderful job. And certainly you can introduce your family to this year. My husband's Alan. My name is Taylor and this is Grax. Very good, very good. We are glad to have you. Thank 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 you. has been with the district and has always done a good job in whatever position she's been in. So we are so happy to see you. She'll do for long. <laughs> she will do the right thing. She will do well. Human Resources District, Mr. Taylor. Mm -hmm. I recommend approval. I'm over with Doc. Second. Any discussion? 
I just want to say uh, how thankful we are to our district level uh, administrators and school level administrators. You do a phenomenal job, and uh, especially this year, uh, you know, we've, we've gone through a lot of different changes, and you've just been right there doing it, and the planning that, that the district staff did for COVID was amazing. And I think our reading scores uh, said that we, we did the right thing for our county, that we were able to maintain even with all the turmoil. So I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And we just appreciate you. We don't always tell you, but we, we do appreciate your job because we don't get many phone calls, do we? <laughs> because you're doing a, a great job. I'd like to tag in on that also. Um, a lot of people just don't know what the district level employees and the, the school level go through and uh, an example of that is uh, the unfortunate situation that's going on today and stuff that the uh, teachers and, and but also the administrators that are having to deal with that as far as dealing with the family so it truly is greatly appreciated uh, when you're in a small community like this something like that hits a bit harder than some of the large communities so we appreciate everything out there yeah. y'all are all welcome <laughs> well, we left you out. Dr. <laughs> Cleveland did we're call we're out we're Superintendent for prayer. Not that I would mention that. Which I didn't forget. <laughs> so we, we, we do have a great leadership. Great leadership. I'm not saying that. And I'll I'll always, I, I mean, I always, my, my barometer is phone calls. <laughs> I can tell real fast. Oh, yeah. uh, because when, you, when a child has got the parents upset, the house is upset, we're gonna know it. <laughs> I very, very rarely get complaints. Very rarely. And that's I agree. that's something to be said. So thank you. Do we vote on that? Yeah, we have both. Okay. Okay. Ms. Taylor, your recommendation. Yeah, we, we got the first, yeah, first and second. second. Okay. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Um human resources waived, Mr. Taylor. I recommend approval. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Informational items, Ms. Taylor. You have any yes, uh, Superintendent. Ms. Arnold, did you bring that? Uh, the, as you're aware, the third grade scores came out this week, and, and we did outstanding. Oh, after, yes, 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 yes. And so I asked Ms. Arnold not her, so. to <laughs> give the back sheets <laughs> that you have in front of all the districts all the right. state. The state Last dropped uh, by 4% on the percentage point. We held steady at 60 all the way through. Holding steady during this is great. It is, it is outstanding. Well, kudos to Ms. Dixon because this information was not sent to Mr. Taylor or myself, but Ms. Dixon found it on DOE's website. So, yeah. woo! Yeah. Yeah. Um, third grade scores <laughs> came too. <laughs> third grade scores um, came out. Uh, the first of last week, I think, but it was very hush hush. We didn't get our typical release. We didn't get anything like that. And we only got a list of individual student names. So we had done some calculations and felt pretty good about it. But when you see the comparison to other districts, you realize only about a third of the districts either stayed the same or improved. And we were um, in 2019, we were two percentage points above the state average, and now we are six percentage points above the state average. So um, we stay the same at 60%. 60% of our third graders scored a three or higher. That was true as well in 2019. We did test fewer students at both schools, um, but still, and also our virtual students are included in this. To my knowledge, we had one student that did not come in and test. Um, as you know, we have to have a 90% 90, 90 test rate to get school grades, but we had a good turnout for our ILE students, our virtual, so hopefully this is things to come. The other scores will not be here until July 30th. So we have a whole other month to wait until those scores are released. But um, any other questions about that? We're cautiously optimistic. We are cautiously optimistic. Good. This group of students, this is their first time testing, and they missed a year and a half of what would have been considered traditional instruction. 
Um, we have contacted nearly all of our ALI students. Almost all of them are coming back. Even some of our virtual students indicated they're gonna come back traditional. So I've heard Mr. Taylor say, and it's very true that next year is gonna be even harder. I think we have 400 kids coming back that weren't in school, and we'll probably have expectations it's gonna be just like normal, and I don't know that that's gonna be the case for a while. So I think um, this is a great indication that, like Dr. Cleveland said, some of the things we did certainly paid off. I think Work. it's a good indication for our kids. And only three, only three of those uh, counties had increases. Exactly. So, and uh, you know, the other thing I think, what the Ali, the fact that the Ali students tested was the fact that teachers stayed in contact with those students. So they didn't get away out of Never Never Land and then say, oh, I'm not gonna come and test it. There had to be that that personal relationship with those students or they wouldn't have come and tested. I agree. Because that's the last thing they want to do. So, I will, And I'll also tell you that um, the state gave us a little wiggle room on the promotion <laughs> for fourth grade. They didn't say the student had to pass, but they did say um, that you could use other measures. Our district held fast to, we wanted to see evidence of that proficiency in reading. So our students could still use a concordance score or they could use the FSA. Some districts just said, we're not using the FSA scores at all. We're not gonna do any concordance. So I think that message did get to our parents and we had a really good pass rate as well for our students. If they didn't pass the FSA, I know Vernon Elementary had um, several students, like maybe four, that were one point away from being a three or higher. So um, those students demonstrated proficiency on another measure. And um, so we felt overall there was real good uh, promotion rate too. So that was good. Any questions about third grade? Thank you, Ms. Arnold. That's Ms. Arnold's last meeting and last address for the board. And she hit it out of the park when she sent me that this morning. And she said, do you want me to send this to the board? I said, no, come to the board meeting tonight. So, uh, this, this one is what I had really been worried about. And when this stuff come through, and even Ms. Arnold, they had done the calculations and we realized that we hadn't them. But it just was even better than we had hoped. So I'm very proud, uh, proud for the elementary principals, those third grade teams, parents, and everyone. Really, truly, you know, shows yes. all the work that goes in from from the top, Mr. Taylor. Oh, what a <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that. Oh, that's all the way down, it, it really does. Um, looking at those numbers, it's it's impressive. Um, Mr. Taylor, you have any other? No, that's all. That's it. Okay. Um, board, any of the board members have anything? Well, one thing they did offer shots today, the students at Vernon and Chipper. I think they had about nine or ten. Yeah. And just a re refresher, hello, one other thing, um, just a refresher, uh, I know she worked while she was on vacation, so <laughs> <laughs> she put off, uh, sent us email, but we have our next uh, regular board meeting be July the 12th, um, that next day, Water Panhound Technical College, the nursing program has a graduation on July the 13th at 6 p.m. at uh, Shallow Baptist Church, let's do that in mind. Um, then one week later, July the 19th, we have a special board meeting starting at 4 p.m. Um, that would be followed by the dress code workshop. Uh, and that would be, like I said, July the 19th. And uh, rolling by another week or two, July the 26th, we'll have a uh, budget workshop. And then believe it or not, teachers will, res will resume <laughs> one week later, August 1st. Flying back. I just want to make all the teachers and the teachers in here feel <laughs> Anything else from the board, Mr. Taylor? Anything else from our audience? I don't normally say that, but I'm, I'm taking that chance today. Audience, all right. If not, we adjourn. <laughs>